still win the fight four on five if the chrono is good. That's yep. how much stronger their team fight is in my book. And then when he needs to deal damage is in the middle late game when, well, then he's going to have a couple of items and not die so easily to the DP. So we'll see. I think Fnatic, it's very important that Hani gets off uh, an early mech, which I believe he will be getting for their team this time around, because they need some sort of team fight presence and it has to come through items, else Empire's just going to brute force their towers down. Yeah. Man, I, I want to, okay. I was really worried about this ward on the bottom that was playing on my van score. He de-warded the Fnatic Observer ward very early on, but I thought for a moment it was going to block up this camp, but it looks like it's just an inch high enough. Yeah, the spawn box for that camp actually pretty much lines up exactly with the trees, so if you put it just a little bit above, that's perfect. Well, he's got that one, man. But at lanes, as far as it goes, uh, looks like top lane's having itself some fun time, Mag. Running away from this SD disruption as well as laser combo coming out. So it's, it's a safe lane tinker with uh, Big Daddy as the SD supporting. Mag's taking up Brutes first. Uh, Tide Hunter, I'll say Brutes first. He now picks up his Brutes so he can battle up against this SD. Uh, while in the jungle, you got Fly doing an Enchantress. You've got Hani in the middle lane, Death Prophet up against Resolution's Puck. And down towards the Radiant jungle, always on a Fly doing a bit of a pull through. He's got Fanscore there with him as the Sky Wrath made. Silent as Space is Void. And that puts an off lane Brewmaster, Mr. Stout Shield, Drunken Brawler, and no experience points. On bottom lane. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty accurate way of putting it. And I don't know if I don't think Trixie's going to get anything. Brewmaster offlane is really bad on Dire. He, I, I like to look at it in a very simple way. I think the the offlaners you generally want to put on Dire are either dual lanes like Mag and oh. SD disruption. Yeah. Fly's also going to troll here, so we can trap up Mag. There's still Anchor Smash available, and killing off this offlane Tide Hunter. You could try, but unless you're diving in behind the tower with a large amount of damage, you're gonna have no joy there whatsoever. And there's there's a couple of reasons why it's so much easier to be the radiant offlane. The main reason, of course, is where the wave starts. And how you know you have this camp, you can pull this one to the left. Uh, you're generally in a better lane position, and because of that, there's many heroes you can run on the radiant offlane, which are really weak on the dire. Brewmaster is an example of a hero I would not put on the dire offlane, and we're seeing why. Plane, what it's really all about is either putting so much pressure with your hero that you force the supports to not pull, or have something that can disrupt the creep equilibrium, like clockwork cogs to block away the creep wave, lich to deny creeps, or running duo lanes or something like that. Anything that can kind of be disruptive in the lane. Brewmaster doesn't have any mechanic to do that, so he's just being bullied away. He has to stand back, watch Silent get rich, and not really do anything about it. And the trade-off is Titus having a great time top. First of all, he's Radiant, and secondly, Titus is just a better offlaner than Brew. I, I want to ask you this question now. So, like, you're breaking apart the offlaner, so I want, to, I want to break apart the number one positions. you got Silent versus Tinker. Now, I'm watching Silent just free farming bottom lane. He's staying ahead of the CS of the Tinker. What is the Tinker really going to change once he gets farmed? Like, what's his purpose coming in into what I appear to be like 10 minutes when he has his BTs up and running? Uh, he has to get a couple of good marches off defensively when Empire go for tower fights or for diving kills. That's what he can do at that point. Of course, he needs to continue farming, and then if he reaches a late, late game position when he has a lot of farm, it's... Fnatic has a lineup that can find ganks and pick heroes off. Soulcatcher, like I said, together with Tinker, just one-shots a hero, pretty much, if Tinker has a Dagon. And you have somewhat good smoking potential with the uh, Enchantress and Shadow Demon combined and Brewmaster if he gets anything, which I'm slightly worried for Trixie for so far in this game. Uh, but yeah, not in my book, not the best Tinker game. And I think Fnatic are just forcing themselves to play this hero because they feel like, okay, Excalibur is really good on this hero, we have to pick it. My question for you, I think you've cast more Fnatic than I have recently. Do they ever pick anything else than Tinker or Meepo for uh, Excalibur, if one of those is available? Ever pick any other hero? Nothing instantly comes to mind, and I actually haven't cast that much Fnatic recently. Uh, like, not even a Dream League, I wasn't casting that, I was just watching it. Uh, but even then, man, like, I don't think they really mix it up much. There's like some... Man, I almost want to double check this now. You don't really remember any other game when he, when he plays another hero. I, I'm, I'm, looking I at, I'm looking at his history, and it's basically SF is actually his last hero we played, which was last night up against uh, Navi. Uh, then it's Tinker, Meepo, 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 SF, uh, Meepo, Tiny, Tinker, Meepo, Tiny, Meepo, Tinker, Lycan, Tiny, Tiny. Okay, so 
More variety than I thought, but still about 60% of his games are Tinker or Meepo, I guess. And especially of their big victories have been with him on those heroes, so... I mean, of course, Fnatic can, can sit and, and think, okay, we won a lot of games because he had a standout performance on those heroes, but like you said, they're being figured out. Mm -hmm. And they're playing the same thing, and it's okay. You see, Empire are not doing anything extraordinary. I think their drafts so far in the games have been pretty predictable as well but the thing is they play a style but they have so many different heroes they can put into that style so even though you know how empire is going to play they're not easy to draft against tani they're coming from first blood, first blood up against him he actually went for a very early ultimate and the sc destruction is the best time actually evades a lot of the damage coming out from sky wrath mage allowing honey now to bottle up and they're looking for a kill and always want to fly considering they got the catch on him and fly was also rotating into the middle lane this crop ulti is not going to last that long which means they get no damage onto the tower. It's very defensive. The first rotation in, the creep wave's already dragged down, and it's minimal damage to the tower. In fact, Ancient Apparition's doing more damage to fly right now, with two points up and chilling touch, than Fnatic did to basically all of Team Empire. The good thing for Fnatic about this, first of all, they avoided getting the first blood given to Empire, which is great, but it's not only that. Trixie finally gets a little bit of space bottom. He's level three, six minutes in against... Well, Tide is almost level six in the top lane, I, so that kind of... I hate to tell you, man, but Trixie's been it. level three for, like, the past two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> but he's getting some now, at least. He's going to get two waves, so he might hit level four, but... Just, yeah, as, as far as golden experience goes, it's actually fairly even right now, and I think the Enchantress is the big factor. They're just getting more out of the jungle right now, with Fly almost being level 6, so... He has prioritized farming over ganking, which I think is fine. He tried one gank top, didn't really work, and I don't see much gank potential in the mid lane. He has to play the farming Enchantress, but then, if this is how you want to play the Enchantress in this game, do you think Enchantress was the better choice over something else? No, uh, the, the, I... I didn't, I didn't see the Enchantress just doing anything in this game. Like, the ton of the pickup makes it impossible to really gank him on the top, because the chance of survival is just so high. Uh, you can't gank up Resolution in the middle lane, because he's just so difficult to control. And if you try and gank up Sand on the bottom lane, you're going to die. That's why I, I kind of said during the drafting phase, I want to see the Enchantress go aggro tri lane, because the, it hasn't had enough presence early on, and every time you've rotated it out, like, it's good experience levels coming into, into fly, but that's basically all. I think the original idea behind it was that Hani would trick the ultimate and Fly would have an army of the dead in front. And they would just tank up everything else that's there. And they just force down early towers. Like with seven minutes, eight minutes in, the tier one tower goes on the top lane. And Hani was actually rotating over to try and help with this. As is, he's building into a Yule Scepter? Okay. Yeah, that's good. Straight it's Yule so Scepter. good in Death Prophet. The, the first item Yule Scepter? Over, like, mech? Uh, this is oh, yeah, that's true. I was saying the mech, but I think we might see Fly getting that. Because he was playing so farm-intensive, he could perhaps get it at a decent timing here and and he, let, he built, let Hani focus on carrying a bit more. He built strength trades, man. Like, if this is going to be the Enchantress I think it's going to be, it's an urn Enchantress. Could be. And I know they're playing against AA, so the mech isn't a guaranteed heal if you're under Ice Blast, of course, but I still think they're going to have to go for it. They need something to deal with these fights, unless they believe that they can split push this game so hard that they never get into a team fight. Because without a mech, I don't see them winning a team fight against Empire's lineup right now. Um, they, they can't split push this game though. Like when they want to take towers, they've got to commit more than just like a tank on a split push. Yeah, AA ulti is already going to screw with you a lot. Having Puck in the in the trees at any point, being able just to blink himself out, is also going to screw you up. Like Resolution now has finished treads. It's still going to come out in the courier, but he has treads. And with an Invis rune, he's probably going to kill off SD now. Like Silence waiting for the opportunity to get look behind the tower and see both Trixie as well as uh, SD here. So Resolution's primary objective: silence the SD, which means they can kill Trixie because he'll he'll cop an orb to the face and the rest of the right click from Silence underneath the Chronosphere. Oh, and Fly Smoke is finally going to get broken here by Resolution. So he also, he tried to rotate for a gank again and it was spotted out, so he failed that one. And this is a very quiet game as far as kills go. First Blood hasn't even occurred in like 10 minutes, but... Compared to our last game? Yeah. yeah. Oh, smoke. Oh boy, he here we broken. go. The Vortex comes up, the Gush goes over towards the SD. Radiant He's got no way out of this corner, but the Centaur stomp catches through here. It's really good silence. Jumps in, the SD instructs it. He's trying to push himself up the hill. It's not going to work. First Blood does happen. It's going to be no side going down. But Excalibur's coming in silent. No leap. He'll have to Chrono, but the Dream Call goes off. He holds the Chrono, in fact. Yeah, I'm really surprised he didn't just throw it there and run out. 
Yeah. Maybe they had the opportunity to turn around with a good chrono, or at the very least he could have escaped, but... He might have been worried you'd catch the rest of his team in there and buy some time yeah. for the, like, support to rotate in. I think there was a point when his entire team was, like, outside this area and the enemies yeah. were hanging around here, so it was actually a pretty good chrono placement he could have got there, and fair enough if they don't want to fight, but maybe he could have gone out. But still, it's gonna be one for one. Fnatic do get first blooded on Shadow Demon, but get a recovery kill, and they're ahead on gold. Experience is fairly even, and... I don't know if you can be satisfied with having even experience when you go for this kind of an enchantress pick. I still think we need to see Fnatic take more, uh, play more aggressively around the Jump. map and get something done. Here Trixie. we go, Trixie. Yeah. Hey, there's no actually mana for oh, chilling disruption. touch, and the SD disruption will, will save him from this. And Silent, he's going to jump out this one. And Silent, with already two points of poison on him, he is dead right now. Unless he doesn't even backtrack. He's going to oh, leave one second. Leave. No, no. the SD poison connected. The SD poison was able to reach him. I think he might have been able to time walk there. He had it off cooldown for like a full second without casting. He might have been no, worried it, that Brewmaster would swing. I, I, I was watching the my screen, man. He still had a, a cooldown of one second when that last poison went out. And see him with the jump away. Uh, that was really close no matter what, but very nice from Fnatic here to uh, to reinforce. And no has been on point with the disruption so far. He's really countered a couple of ganks here. And as a reward for that, he's now going to have uh, Tranquil Boots, which will make him even faster and have a lot of an easier time moving between the lanes here and being in the right place at the right time. And as far as farming goes, Fnatic are looking pretty good. I mean, Excalibur is getting really good farm. Uh, Hani is getting what he should out of the mid lane as well, maybe an, even a little bit more. 63 CS at 11 minutes in the mid lane is very high. Tower is under attack. So does Puck, actually, so they're, they're tied up there. This is not looking too shabby for Fnatic, I have to say. This early game could have... You know, we want them to put a more pressure here with their lineup, but all in all, the way it's gone, it's not... This could be enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. I'm still, though, not going to... I'm going to re reserve my judgment properly until I see a damage-dealing item over on Faceless Void and the Blink Daggers on both Tide as well as on Puck. And that's only like 600 gold away-ish for both of them. Radiance Middle Tower. These things are up, attack. there's going to be a big change. And because Empire has all their level 6s, this is also another big thing for me. So much sounds like Aeol is coming to oh, the bottom Aeol. lane, and they can just go on the SD, and he gets nailed by that! Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Fanscore has ultimate, man! He's just sitting there, he was waiting for something. And this is like that level 6, like, advantage, which I think Team Empire just has so much over Fnatic. And Fnatic has no way to control it, apart from silence Radiant's from Hardy. Tower is under attack. But in, in contrast to the previous game, at the very least, Excalibur is getting better farm. He is not as counterpicked, and Fnatic in general are not falling apart in the early game. They haven't lost a tower 30 minutes in. They've taken one themselves. Excalibur is now starting to split apart the map, and I don't know if Empire has what it takes to. Yes, they want to go for these brute, brute force team fights, but Excalibur is already in a position where he's starting to put pressure on a lane like this top lane. They have to defend, and as long as they have to do that. They can't really group up and get the fight they want. Yeah, I actually agree with you on that one, man. Like, they needed something to work for, like, like split push, but Team Empire's trade-off is the fact that they've just got so much team fight control, so if they can force Fnatic to come into a team fight, then Fnatic are in a lot of trouble. Oh, bot lane. They already jumped again. Yeah, there's Chrono, and this time it's going to be Trixie. Split won't come in time. Boy, even getting a lock at the end, and now no tell. SC disruption. We got triple TPs in fact coming in for this one. Silent, jump in two seconds. Backtrack needs to help him a little bit more here, but it will not. Go down the A. It did come in nicely, but there's no one near. There's no one near to do damage to the heroes to make him shatter. And that was a lot of reinforcement from Fnatic. They moved their entire team down there, and because of that, Resolution's gonna free farm mid and take a little bit of damage on the tower here. Actually almost has his Blink Dagger as well at this point, so... Oh, oh boy. <laughs> this is This is how you can catch out a hero like Tinker. Wait till he comes to you, but now Brewmaster split. Matt's gonna lose his life with this kill. One charge just won't save him here. And he gets out, but he did save Resolution. Resolution copped both the laser and the rocket to the face without using his phase shift. So he accepted the damage he was taking. Without without the Tundra to then, it could have just been like a straight zero for one in favor of Fnatic. I'm gonna try to make something out of it here in the mid lane. Death Prophet Ultimate level two is now up, and this this is one of the ultimates that gets the most better every time you level it. To be fair, Exorcism level one is absolute garbage, 
And on level 2, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's a really big deal that Honey reached level 11. And they will get this tower. Uh, it cost them the Brewmaster to split, but then again, Tide was... Keeping Tide's way in. The AO is going to connect over on Trixie, and he's looking for the blink up. Oh, denied! Cannot get it, though. And, yep, Ancient Apparition denies the tower. Well, we've got Purge over on Mag. Resolution blinks up for the Silence Honey. Low on life for the Gush. He actually yules it to himself up before the Gush is able to connect. And always want to fly, looking to back up, getting hit by the rockets of Excalibur. The rearms already happened, while Concussive Shock connects on fly. Vanscore is looking for the nuke. Sans and gets the nuke off with the orb from Resolution, able to pick up a kill. A little bit further down, though, is a triple kill for Excalibur. And now SD Disruption. Excalibur has got laser, and that's all that's available. Backtrack not coming up. An ultra kill for Excalibur. Fighting from inside the trees. He's got Blink Dagger available, but Resolution going to silence, do some damage, and make it so he can't blink after him. This is... that was just really well done by Fnatic and a misstep from Empire at the same time. They they already lost that tower. Sure, they got the deny, but the price they paid was really not worth it. And the reason they shouldn't try to defend that is they know they Ravage on cooldown because they used it before, and Void was in the bottom lane without a TP, and if he even had one, he had ultimate on cooldown. Just cut your losses and lose the tier 1. I think... They could have been okay with losing this tower, it's obviously not that good, but knowing how they can come back in this with massive teamfight later on, the only thing that needs to not happen for them is that Fnatic gets more ahead. And that kind of that kind of fight really costs them. That was about 1500 gold and 2000 experience going Fnatic's way, basically for free, because they already got what they came for, which was the tower. Mm -hmm. Lucian, if he was a second earlier, he would have caught out uh, Nurtel on the bottom lane. And they can see everything that's moving around. There's actually a really nice aggressive ward coming out from Empire on the bottom lane. I'm trying to keep tabs on them so they know when to gank it up. And they're actually giving Vanscore a little bit more space in the bottom lane to get that Skywrath up. The hilarious thing is, too, Skywrath, for me, kind of feels like the better controller during these team fights than anybody else in Empire. Which is hilarious I say such a thing when you have like Dream Call, Ravage, as well as Faceless Boy Chrono. Like, all of these things together. Void actually never got his Chrono off during that mid-fight. Yeah, he wasn't even there, and he didn't have it. That's why you feel like Skyrath is the big controller, because those two ultimates actually weren't ready. <laughs> so, well, then it's kind of hard to use them, right? But, yeah. We're going to see if Empire can manage to get the kind of fight they need, at least for Fnatic for now. This this is starting to look really good. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm making an overstatement if I say they needed this kind of lead at this point, but... Well, I'm actually going to stand by that. I think they really need it to be this far ahead. I'm not convinced it's going to be enough just yet, but we're starting to reach the point when Excalibur is going to take off really heavily. He has the Dagon already, 16 minutes in. We'll be upgrading that really quickly, and then they can start bursting these heroes very fast. And Silence item build is actually, I think, he's so fragile. It's going to be hard for him to go in. He's going Maelstrom treads. At the same time, though, if he jumps in, like, the only thing which is going to give him a good chrono is if the SD is caught out. At all other times, you might just be sitting there going, chrono's not worth it, wow, Mag. Ravage is over to kill off the SD. Now, the AOD will connect into both Trixie as well as SD, but Mag, he's just been poisoned up by Excalibur. The Dream Call oh, never no. hold it there. He actually walked out of it, killing he broke himself. The leash. Yep, he actually killed himself then. The rest of Empire were backing up. He didn't have to die. Whoops. That, yeah, that's also going to be a road for Fnatic, and they were just ready for that. There were five heroes in position, it was a two-man gank from Empire. And it's weird to see Empire playing like this, it's almost like they're not completely sure what they want to do, because they have an amazing teamfight lineup, but we haven't seen the teamfight yet. They're gathering up in these duos, maybe they think it's too obvious and Fnatic are going to figure them out if they start going missing on the map, and that Fnatic will just dodge the fights. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go for a two-man gank, let Skyrath be one of them. Not tied together with Puck, either Puck Skyrath or Tide Skyrath, and you ravage and you instantly use Skyrath ult on the target and he dies. Uh, but this just didn't work out. It's been, I feel like it's been like 10 minutes since we saw the, the Chrono, and it's only been used like once this game, so. Empire's being, they're being red right now by Fnatic. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on the whole thing where Empire just don't really seem to have a purpose. You look at the game, and maybe Empire is just still very, very like worried about uh, just about the smut push, about the effect of this tanker. T Excalibur has destroyed many a lineup, and they may just be sitting there in the back of their mind, going, "Wait, so how? How are we meant to deal with this guy?" Quite sure. Do we just move as five? We move as five. Then we move as five. It's like, oh, we're wasting too much time trying to find kills. So what do we do now? No, we move as three. No, that's not enough. Move as two with a puck and a tide. Yeah, still not enough. 
Uh, oh boy, always oh, one of flies in a terrible position right now. <laughs> he's trapped on two different sides. He's just trying to get yeah. the ward down. But, okay, Yule Scepter will send him up. And now he's back down again. He's trying to get a short range AA blast off, which he did. He actually connected on fly, but he, he knew he was dead. All of that to place the sentry ward, which I think Fnatic will realize was just placed. That was very obvious, else why would AA ever be down here in the river? It's already being pinged out now by Fnatic. Mm -hmm. Go counter ward this, so... Basically gave his life away there, and... Well, we're gonna see if, uh, if Empire can make a comeback in this game. I think we're reaching the point when we need to start talking about a comeback, because sure, they're behind a little bit, but it might not be... You know, you can be behind on golden experience and actually still indirectly leading the game because your lineup is doing better than it should, but I think right now they're doing worse than they should. And For me, the way to come back here is just to... ...flute the Void more in the movement and the Skywrath. Not for that, man. Like, even like... Here we go. Like, like dual more like this. Oh, well, they, okay, so we get a four-man smoke movement. To fly and keep his distance. The funny thing is, though, he just broke his smoke here in the mid lane, but it's, it's actually bringing Excalibur here to the mid. He's got Dagon up and running, so we're back to our standard Excalibur build, which is VTs, Blink Dagger, Ghost Scepter, into the Dagon, then finish the E Blade with the casual Soul Ring, of course. They need to catch him out and then force Radiant into a tower. tower. Yes, and now they're getting split pushed again. Hani, this bot yeah. tower is just disappearing. So much damage coming out from this level 2 ultimate with 4 in Witchcraft. And they're not going to defend it. They're going to try for a trade here in the top lane, but... I think this... Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. I think might even be able to hold this if they play it right. Big Daddy's already porting up. They've I'm got wondering though if they know resolution behind the tower. Because that could cause a lot of problems for them. Like, you, you got Blink Decker Tide that can jump on you. You still got Chrono, and you got Resolution, you can also jump at Harney. Well, this is going to be the end of his ultimate. Like, it only just wore off. And now, well, no tell has called out Mag. Disruptions, no tell. I don't know if Mag is asleep right now. Harney getting si actually getting the silence off before he's still got his Chrono. Resolution, he's jumped on no tail. Now, this is a one for one trade for Brewmaster jumps in for the split. Now, Harney, he's also going up high. Resolution being controlled. He's able to face shoot himself around while Harney continues to run away from the orb. But Resolution does go down, now Silent, well, backtrack, can he even get one? He keeps getting silenced! Another fight with no Chrono, it's a 3 for 1, Mag has been punished by this Brewmaster, while the Skyrath Mage Ultimate almost killed off Harney, but almost isn't enough. And this will be a full 5 for 1 trade-off, again in favour of Fnatic, and again, they just, like, through all the silences which Fnatic don't have, they're getting it at the perfect time to stop them. I, I don't know if, if Empire cannot execute that kind of team fight. I think this is the, like the best chance they had. And there were two of their big ultimates. Actually, three ultimates that weren't even used. Yep. Chrono, Dream Call, and Ravage neither got used. And it was all because of the setup coming here from No Tail. He Radiant's caught Titan in a, in a bad position. And not only did he catch him off, he was also blocked by his own illusions. So he was stuck there for such a long time that the fight could develop. I'm still puzzled by how Fnatic won that fight so hard, though, with no ultimate available for Hani. And with No Tail just dying in the beginning of the fight, sure, he stalled out the tide, but... I mean, if these ultimates don't get used by Empire, I think they're just too greedy with them. If you hit two-man Ravage or two-man Chrono or something, that's fine. Then you can fight on those terms. I think maybe they're hoping for fights that are just not realistic to get. See, the, the funny thing is, though, that fight was entirely realistic, but the positioning kind of didn't make it realistic. Like, if we zoom out a little bit on this top lane, we had Resolution up here in the top box in the trees. We had Tidehunter over here. And then we a little bit further down, like we had the rest of the crew. And they're like, well, who do we initiate on? We had one from Fnatic TPM, and then the rest of them came in through the jungle. So you had one hero who was meant to be initiator, expecting like a four-man TP to come on top of the tower. That would have made that fight perfect, but because they got approached from like two, three different angles, Empire just like they couldn't have their full-on control team fight. And so yeah, that's and that oh boy. On the top. Actually, they might get a kill here. No tail's caught in the river and always gonna fly. Okay, they're moving up. They're looking for fly. Okay, wait, Void? What the hell? Yeah, he got one shot by Excalibur. He has E-Blade already, 22 minutes in. So he E-Bladed, Rocket, Dagon. He's level 18 in a 22 minute game. As he disrupts some something for resolution. It's a good silence and dream coil, but he can't follow up with the kill right now. He had a phase shift, the Ravage will come up from Mag, and that will be able to get a kill. It's not Trixie from going for the straightaway split, but we still with Crypt Swarm as well as Clap, and that Ulban's still up from Harney. We had enough damage to kill off Mag. So the puck did get himself away to safety, but he's all being just as a, def as a defensive nature. And the movement's been for Harney. Now, that Crypt Swarm, I think, is doing more damage than his ultimate is, in, like, as far as, like, effectiveness during the fight. 
this is it's 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 going out of control now i think empire you know they have this amazing mid game lineup with great team fight but now the deficit is just so big that it's going to be so hard to come back excalibur is out of control Level 18 at 23 minutes is ridiculously high, and it's all been set up by these good rotations and good ganks from Fnatic and Empire's inability to to get their teamfight abilities off. They once again, Void got caught off. I don't think we've seen a Chrono since seven minutes into the game or eight or so. so he's gone 15 minutes now without using his ultimate. Hey, here we are. Oh boy. Chrono on Excalibur, but he has to wait out the E blade, so now he can attack. But he doesn't have the life points here. One laser will kill him. Uh, he had to run away then. Will come in, but it's already too late. He TP'd that out. That almost looked like he gave up. That, that was a I, I can't outrun him because the Tinker could have just blinked him to oh, he's coming back in again. And wait, wait for it, wait for it. He played already. The Sky Rats just evaporates and always gonna fly. This sounds as a gang coming in from Harding. The timing of this resolution can't do anything. And Nortel delays the attack. Martial Machines come out, a rearm into rocket. It won't be enough to kill off Mag. You'll set bring up into the air, and he can blink into a laser rock. Not to mention the E-Blade. This is GG, man. Like, Excalibur is walking over Team Empire right now. And Empire, like, they're getting killed behind their Tier 2 tower when they have Void, Tide, as well as Puck, and AA and Skyrat. Yeah. Like, this shouldn't be possible. This is what an Excalibur Tinker game looks like if he gets completely free reign and he isn't really counterpicked and he just, you know, you, you can't leave him alone like this. That's, uh... Even the stat, man. Even yeah, the stat. It's insane. He's just out of control this game. He plays this hero so incredibly well. And that's what I loved about Empire's way of dealing him, with him in the first game. They knew what they were getting into. They counterpicked and counterplayed him really hard and he didn't become effective in that game. In this game, we're showing why teams have been banning Tinker against Excalibur. It's such a beautiful performance. He's using the map very well, farming extremely much while still get, being part of 19 out of 21 kills for his team. And yeah, he's just, he's completely out of control. This is just, I don't want to call this standout performance because it seems like this is what he does every game that this happens in. You just need to not let it happen. And Empire, they missed their timing and they're getting to pay for it. He's just rolling over them. Yeah, this, this is where I was, I, we were talking about during the draft saying we like, we loved Empire's thing, but you just said it perfectly then. Empire missed their timing. They needed to win that fight up on top lane. And they need to be a little bit more over-aggressive with their items. Like, the Tinker still got free space to farm up. Empire tried to stop the, the stacking. But they didn't, they didn't succeed. They didn't succeed. There was still, like, that, that quad stack of Ancients, which Excalibur came in to farm up. And that was, like, his injection of money he required. And with that, he's made space. So even Trixie now, like, this guy had basically nothing at the start of this game. And now he's got 1800 gold, 1200 away from a full Aghanim Scepter after having his Blink Dagger. And now Harney, he's going to find Silent, starts with the Silence and won't have any other follow-up. It's just Concussive Shock coming to Harney, but his movement speed as well. Like, we can't even have him talked about Harney at all. Like, he's getting silenced off left, right and center, but he's sitting there with a level 2 Exorcism, insanely high movement speed, and now he's got a level 3 Exorcism available. Hello. Hot plate mail. Engagement, there's your Chrono, but he can't beat Fly. It's untouchable as well as the Sprite. Tinker's keeping it, and they got Void in the air. Ravage will come up from Magna, that night with the Dream Coil. Mag gets a double kill on this one, but Excalibur, he's still e blading out Harney, waiting his time. He's got Crypt Swarm available, and the disruption at the very last moment, meaning Silent had to hang around a little bit longer inside the March Machines, backtracking a little bit of it. I thought Tinker might just buy back here, but he's got nothing to jump to at the moment. But no tell, he's trying to catch up to Silent. Look at the movement speed from Harney. He's so quick. Crypt Swamp, there's no mana for have... it, and now he does it. You'll set her up into the air. Poison will fly, Silence as well, so he can't just walk himself away, which he can't do anyway. And they get the kill without having to use their nukes. William plays, the AALT won't connect on either of them either. They're, they're home scot free. Yeah, I, I love that this fight happened because it actually got to show what Empire's lineup could have done if they got the scenario that they were hoping for and that they just never got in the game. That fight we just saw was pretty even. They were 15,000 gold behind when that happened and 20,000 experience. And they got a draw in that fight. And that's with such an absolutely ridiculous deficit. This was a fight where they used their spells and the Chronosphere in that fight actually was kind of irrelevant too. He used it on a solo enchantress that didn't even die. Yep. So it was the other abilities combined, so they still haven't had... That team fight was good. It might not even be satisfactory looking from the standpoint of their draft, but it was certainly good enough. 
If they have that kind of fight 10 minutes ago, it's a 5 0 wipe. Just flat out. Fnatic get completely crushed. But the advantage is too big now, and that's that's what I was saying about the timing window. Empire's lineup now is actually really weak. Because they have so much AoE damage, but Fnatic are really tanky and really mobile, and they just spread them out and kill them now. And silence damage is not relevant yet. Empire's coming in to maybe contest Roshan. They have Chrono, they have Dream Coil. Tide Ravish is available, but then again. Maybe they won't have resolution available either. He's purged up, poison stacked, and there's your Dagon E Blade again from Excalibur. SC's the man that gets to take the kill though, and they go back in for Roshan. So with no Puck, there's no Dream Call, there's no control around the pit apart from Chrono, no Tide Ravage available for 23 seconds, and Empire make the only choice they can. Back up, they cannot contest. A ulti will slow it down, but that is all. Pretty good damage to Trixie here to us fly, but yeah, Untouchable is just too good. I wonder if Lani just doesn't really care. and just throws the ulti out just to ensure Roshan. I mean, he doesn't want the he doesn't want the cooldown time. If they get the Aegis now, they might be able to end the game. So I think Hani wants to save his ultimate for that. They're gonna take the Aegis on the Tinker most likely, or unless if they feel like he can just buy back and come back, and that's enough. Uh, I would never put it on the Tinker in this game, man. Like, it's pretty bad on Death Prophet though. It's not yeah. a good Aegis carrier at all. You could give it to Brewmaster, I guess. But so that if he gets caught, he can still split. I think Brew's the best pickup, actually. What Fnatic think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone dodges the ult. No, they give it to Tinker. Well, you were wrong, Toby. Yes, you were wrong. I mean, yes, I was right, kind of. I <laughs> Wait, called a couple of heroes. You, you changed your mind after you listened to me, man. You said, yeah, I'll be Brewmaster. <laughs> you baited me. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. It's a man. trap. I'm sorry. Nahaz, I'm going to also ask you if you can bring that up again. Uh, <laughs> the banter could not be stopped. The banter could not be stopped. I love Cinder and Stray. We need to see our chat trivia question again. Oh, was that a trivia question? Yeah, that was chat trivia, man. Who are the only two players to reach level 18 on Tinker by 25 minutes? Well, I'm going to say Excalibur is going to be one of them. He said two other players. Oh, who are the two other players? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And why am I helping you? Why am I not mocking you? I don't know, um, like, you, you, you become nice all of a sudden. What is with you? <laughs> you're, you're meant to be rude mm. Danish. Come on, I work with Melk. I know what Who's it's all playing about. a really impressive Tinker? Uh, DDZ? He has done it. It's true. I'd almost want to flank Harney as well, but I don't know. Is this only for this patch? So. Is it only for I, this patch? No, I think it was all time. If, I'm going to say DDZ and Dendi. I believe Dendi had some really sick Tinker games in the past, and he might have done that. That was in the very early stages. Yeah, though. it's it's a while ago, but he was insane at some point. He's in that a lot of trouble. It looks like Boy is also getting pounded right now. Uh, that's back in the middle lane. He's, he actually managed to trick the off the Chrono. So, uh, uh, trigger, I mean, the Chrono will now be triggered after Excalibur had his AUC Mortal also triggered out. He does a buyback though. I think Fnatic can go Rex. Uh, that was no tell. <laughs> the one ultimate used whoa, by Empire. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Flink away to safety, man. Radiant's Have any guesses for the trivia? Or... See, I, I still want to fly Carney, but I'm okay. thinking. Radiance top uh... tower has fallen. Well, I don't really want to flag for it, man. Like Ferrari comes to mind. I don't think he's had that though. Yeah, and, and not in Dota 2. Like in Dota 1, he played a lot of it. But in Dota 2, I don't remember much Radiant's of it. Arteezy. Uh -huh. Damn it. Arteezy actually did it. Wow. Oh. Okay. Arteezy has had some mixed performances on Tinker. I remember he had some really good games, but I didn't think they were that extremely good. He's had some very good games and some poor games, which happens to any Tinker player, because we just saw Excalibur, who's arguably one of the best Tinkers in the world. He got so crushed in the last game, he couldn't even, like, he couldn't do anything, but... Arteezy and Hani, actually. So, you won again, you were right. I got both wrong. I can't believe that, that game in the qualifiers was DDZ. He got so much, though. He did. He it was really, unbelievable. Really did. They still didn't have those levels. And you, you, would, you would think. You would think it'd be good. It must be pretty close, though. I, I think his Invoker games were stronger during the qualifiers. And that, that was sick, too. Top lane. And... Nice blink by resolution. He will get out. I th oh, maybe Trees. not. Trees. Yeah, he will. Vision. There's no vision. <laughs> he tried with a group swarm to try and reach him, but not possible. Uh, but it, it does kind of like bring up a different point with Fnatic. You get both Excalibur as well as Harney inside of inside of Fnatic, which are great Tinker players. And then you got Meepo. Then you have No Talon and Excalibur, who are great Meepo players. 
and they, they just double up on their heroes all the time. Like even so, what you're saying is like, they're picking like, Excalibur those heroes because they already love them. No, I'm not saying that. What, 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 what I'm saying is the fact that Fnatic, it's really difficult to read their draft just based on what heroes you pick up because you're never 100 percent sure what lanes that would be played in at the end of the day. Like even Earthshaker, like Hani plays it, No Tail plays it, Hani plays a roaming Earthshaker, where No Tail plays a lane controlling it, like Earthshaker. It's the, the, the lineup really difficult to like read and draft against all the time. Unless you're Empire, at which point like it looks so easy in game number one. Also Harney, man, it's just being a boss on the front lines. He just can range racks without anybody touching him. His EHP is through the roof. He's got 2400 health with 22 armor. Man. And then he has the Yules and Commit. even a regen. Commit. A commit right now. They're right behind it. Harney's still here. They're chased so far for this. But with the silence coming out there from uh, from Hardy, they had no way to actually blink and control. But, well, you know, I, I was talking about this game like it was pretty much over, and Fnatic has an absolutely huge lead, but we saw in the jungle the, the kind of teamfight Empire could take, and Fnatic are not... They got a range Drax there. I think if they get a second lane, to me, the game is just over. But Sound is getting somewhere. He now has a BKB, so he can actually commit into fights now, not worrying about the Tinker. They've also got a Scythe device. Tide is getting pretty close to Ravage, uh, double Ravage with Refresh Orb. And is that the full, almost it's, the full it, Hex? It's not a full Scythe. He actually saved his money. Oh, so look, are you sending it back? I'm sending it back now. Uh, yeah. This could be dangerous, though, as there is a Dire Observer ward right here. This is going to watch the Courier. Uh, they could actually oh. snipe out this Courier right now. Look look for the flag. There's a Blink Dagger over on No-Tail. Movement speed, look at the Courier go. Like, he could have Blink ultied that. Even the while. Yeah, he could have. Because Purge will slow down the Courier, wouldn't it? It, it, it kills it. It doesn't instantly kill it, though. <laughs> it kills it after the... Whenever the damage is dealt, it kills it. All levels of Demonic Purge kill the Courier. It's one of the very few abilities that works that way, and it works that way because Dota. So, <laughs> just Dota. That's how it is. Like you don't have to explain it. It's just Dota. I actually remember reporting that to Ice Frog like two years ago. I was like, I, I was playing a game and a shadow even killed my Kura. I was like, what the hell is this? And I said, why does is Demonic Purge supposed to kill the Kura? And I think his response was, do you think that's a problem? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know, oh, here we go. It's got three of them, and now the Corona Awakens with Excalibur. They've managed to pop off Tinker, moving over to Trixie, Time Warp, Zoro, Tumble Go, the Brew Master, he got silenced up. He was never able to get his split off, and now it's a full fight. They actually brought the Tinker back and the Brew Master back into this fight, and Excalibur's causing a lot of problems here. The Ghost is not helping him off. The Crypt Swarm fan score's gonna pop. Somehow they managed to turn this around. I think it's just money turn this game, this fight around. Look at how, how deep Harney's going in. A Crypt Swarm from that range, it wouldn't kill off the Ancient Apparition. Trying to make sure they can just take the top racks. So, again, the Martial Machines, another jump out. This time the Silence is over, the silence is over on Silence, and the Brewmaster Split will go straight away. They'll bring down the Void. Maybe not. Ah, no, they do. The Brewmaster's attack forward up the hill. The top rack is fully gone, and they just keep pushing out the middle lane. The AOE will come in, but Harney will be able to evade it. And Brewmaster, he sent the A up in the air. And that's actually Harney now coming in too with the Yule Scepter. They could send him up a secondary time if they wanted to, but with Mag that close, they're playing a little bit safe. Oh, they just say, you know what, Excalibur? Okay, backtrack. He backtracked the E-Blade and the Dagon. <laughs> well played. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Actually, who was I talking to? I think it was Trask who I was talking to at DreamHack. And he basically Radiant's said the Faceless Void tower. is actually the only attack. hero in the game that could go the entire game if the random generator works, uh, where he would take no damage. But, I, oh no, 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 no. But there was one thing. There was one thing, and I cannot remember what it was, that would actually bypass the backtrack. Uh, HP removal, I yeah. guess. Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker <laughs> ultimate. HP removal. It would actually take damage from I don't think you can backtrack earn or anything like that either. So yeah, HP removal I guess goes through. But yeah, backtrack it, is just one of those special it's abilities. HP removal? Yes. Okay. Uh, I always just thought it was like a dot effect. Alright. Oh it is, but it's an HP removal effect. So it goes through BKB and stuff. Unless I was born yesterday, but I, I would trust your please, please tell me I am not spreading something wrong now. <laughs> it should really be HP removal. If, if you want to, people, Cinder and does uh, instructional lessons on how to play Dota. Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> we have uh, trouble for, for SD. Already picked off. Trixie also got hit by that AA blast. Man, Empire's making this really, really difficult for Fnatic. For a team which has a 20, 20 basically 20, 20 hit gold and experience advantage, 
It's being really, really difficult. There you go. He's eight for one on the tinker for DDZ. Does that make you feel better? It's like your Templar assassin thing, man. The Haas just won't. Like he gives it to you on a technicality. Yeah, he is. He is absolutely insane. I, I get the technical bonus point again, but yeah. And HP removal is indeed the damage type of of Urn. I, I, you make me start. You make me 